Ready to go with the sun setting over to Santo Field. The low line drive around the 10. Johnston fumbles it, picks it back up, slips ahead toward the 25. Looked like the ball might have come loose around the 26, 27. A flag is down on the field as well. Great athleticism right there by Johnson, staying up, fighting for those couple extra yards. Let's see if that ball did come loose. It's hard the to say. The back, number 38. It's a block in the back. 10 yard penalty from the spot. Of the First down. Saw that mad scramble at the end of the play. But yeah. Johnson apparently held on to the football, and Case will get it, albeit a penalty, dropping him back inside the 15. So Saxton to lead the offense. His number one target will be Colt Morgan. Morgan 146 yards receiving in week one, a preseason All-American. Three wide set for Case. Saxton, first play from scrimmage. Little delay, handoff up the middle. That's gonna get near the sticks. Very close to a first down out by the 26, 27 yard line for Zach Hall. Nice little run, running back draw there. Oh, we're getting in a hurry up. Get a little tempo going. Saxon in the flat, short screen, and that's dropped incomplete. Looking for Rabina, who's been the return specialist the last couple years, starting to line up a little bit more out at wide receiver, but fumbled that one. Let's see, we got third and short here. Let's see what Coach Debs can dial up. Third and one from the 23. This would be a huge stop for Grove City. They motion the ends up front. Colton Young, the 6'7", 300 pound nose tackle right in the middle. There's another draw for Hall. Slipping through, he's got enough for the first down out to the 25, maybe to the 26. That'll move those chains. Spartans used a true tight end there. They really haven't, we haven't run too much tight end sets for the past couple of years. So it'll be exciting to see how that gets utilized throughout the game. See what uh, the Spartans dial up here under Derek Slash, offensive coordinator. Saxton under center with Hall in the backfield. Morgan at the very bottom of your screen. Hasn't been targeted just yet. Brennan Ryan. Snaps it over to Saxton, the handoff right. This is Hall again, spinning away out to the 35 yard line before he's dragged down and a good gain on that little stretch run to the right. Beautiful outside zone there, D goes, gets his inside shoulder, the outside shoulder of that DN, and Zach Hall just cuts right up there. Beautiful blocking on the edge too. Case running the ball a lot right off the bat and there's Hall again for another first down. Did not expect this early on. No, I did, no, I don't think anyone did. And Grove City doesn't look like they did either. Grove City in a 3-4. They traditionally have gone with a four-man front, but because they have that big senior Colton Young in the middle, they've been able to play three down linemen this year. Here comes the former outside linebacker, Brett Carney, in at running back. Carney making that transition this year. Greg Debelak said that was a full staff decision. They all thought they could use Carney's ability, size, and strength on the offensive side. They'll go over the middle. That's good for a first down to Mario Rabina to the 41. Beautiful protection there. Drew had all day. Mario makes a perfect catch right over the middle. And Mario, we mentioned a return specialist the last few years, but Stevie's had a lot of reps in practice with the first team offense. Yes, we had a lot of older receivers last year, so a lot of them would take some time off during practice just to heal their body, and Mario was always in there getting those reps. There's Michael Wojcikowski, the freshman out of Painesville, Ohio, at the bottom of your screen in a three wide set. Hall once again in the backfield. First down from the 41. Saxton, quick look out to the right. And that's to Wojcikowski before he's pushed out of bounds by Jackson McFall. One big guy missing for Grove City, by the way. Maybe their top cornerback and their top returner, Jacob Ross, is out today. 
So this team whose strength is on offense is going to be a little thin in the, in the uh, secondary. Second and four opening drive of the game for Saxton and the Spartans. Fakes a look out to the right. Now it's Hall. He's got a first down past the 30. Another great draw play. We haven't seen this much draw since uh, the days of Rob Kuda and Jacob <laughs> Burke back there. Making it look like a Kuda burke combination. Yes. Parker Kilgore in on the stop. First down from the 28, and this is a surgical drive, mostly on the ground. Donald Day checks in at running back, part of the uh, running back by committee method. We talked about this a little bit. You usually see him in more short yardage situations. Now on first down, they'll fake it to him. Saxton rolls, quick toss, and out by the 20 near the sticks. Beautiful execution. Whole offense line went down the line, running back. Everyone sold it. Glatz just slips right behind and catches the ball. First, first, down, first down for Alex Glatz. Oh, didn't give it to him. Oh, no, wow. Very close. They have first and 10 on the scoreboard, but it's second and one from the 19, and the yard to gain is the 18. Day still in the backfield, three wide out to the left for Saxton. Morgan's right in the middle of that trio. Hasn't been targeted just yet. They'll give it to Day, yet another run, knifing through for a first down inside the 15. Great run by Donald. He's the kind of guy, he's a one-cut guy. A little shorter in stature, but he'll put his head down and get those tough yards. That's why they like him in those short yardage situations. We'll see a lot of that. We might see Mason G. Montgomery in a wildcat in these short yardage spots as well. Haven't seen that look yet. All Saxton. Now he has Hall. Fakes it to him. Goes far side into the flat. A little shimmy out inside the 10 by the 5. That's Rabina again. Good catch and run. Just got to make one guy miss here, or just drag him with you for a couple of yards. <laughs> Set up the next play. Taking Jackson McFall for a ride. Second and two from the five. Spartans on the very first drive of this ball game. Let's see. We're probably going to get maybe a little zone action here, I'd say, leading through with the uh, H back there. That's Hall motioning to the left tip of Saxton. This is Hall in for six. That's how it's done. You see here, Glatz gets a great block, kicks that guy out. Hall one cut right at the middle, untouched. So Zach Hall with the first score of the ball game. First touchdown of the year for the junior out of New Albany High School. Now Robertson Albrecht in to try to make it seven. Ryan Coolidge on the hold. Low snap, handled well by Coolidge. And right through the uprights for Robertson Albrecht. The Spartans with a terrific first drive of this game, largely on the ground. They take a 7 0 lead on the Zach Hall score. With 31 unique creations to choose from, there's something for everyone to love at Dave's Cosmic Subs. Meat lovers, vegetarians, and everyone in between agree that our freshly baked bread, high quality ingredients, and homemade sauces make us the best in Cleveland. Come on into Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry to experience legendary subs in a cosmic atmosphere. And don't forget, we deliver. It's as easy as dialing 216-320-0330. Be the hit of the party. Order Dave's. Zach Hall with the first score of the game for Case Western Reserve at University. A short touchdown for Hall from five yards out, and Case wraps up a very good opening drive. 86 yards after a penalty pushed Case back on the kickoff. 12 plays, and they drove it down the field for that Zach Hall score. Case in the lead, 7-0, and now Albrecht to kick it off for Grove City, or to Grove City, as you get a look at Cameron Roth a moment ago, back deep to return. Now this is Roth from the 10. 
Out past the 25 and drag down. So Grove City will drop anchor around the 26 to start this drive. Ooh. Welcome to the Cam Brown Show. That's <laughs> what I like is, to call it. This is when it starts. This the is Cam when Brown it starts. Show. We got a lot of star power on the field right now between schools of the running back, Gustafsson split out wide, and you got Cam Brown. This but is going to be an extremely interesting matchup with Josh Easton, at quarterback for Grove City. Who is he going to favor, Cameron Drake or Cody Gustafson out wide? And how much do we see pass when you have Wesley Schools in the backfield? Schools gets the first touch, and the Spartans were ready for it. It's on that. Oh. Skyler Wade is Skyler. on that takedown. Good tackler, good tackler. Younger guy, junior now. Really has come a long way in his three years. It's a one-yard loss, second and 11. Now Grove City's in this uh, power set they have. Let's see, they're going to be running the ball. Just depends on which way. Oh. Now East just a little tall in search of Cody Gustafson. Spartans were right there. Colin Schuster in coverage. Now that's what you were expecting was the run, and they deked you a little bit with that power set. Yes. After watching a couple of game films on them when I saw that, it was always ISO left or ISO right because they got a lot of big bodies in there. Andrew DiDonato knew that uh, Case saw that too. It's third and 11 now. They want to switch things up. Schools in the backfield, four wide. Wesley Schools, the senior out of Port Jervis, New York. They'll throw with East on third and long. He'll go deep looking for Drake. Got him in stride. Inside the 30. And a big ball for Cameron Drake. Beautiful pass and catch. Just get some separation on the DBs, and that's how it's done. Just one step on Patrick Crossy, and it's tough to beat him on a dead sprint. It's very tough. I, I know I personally never have. So now they'll go schools in the backfield. There's that power set again. We were talking to some Grove City folks before the game, and they were saying East is great on that deep ball. Yes, which will really open up their whole offense when you have a great running back like Schools. Here's Schools, plants the foot and cuts into the 21. Pretty good gain on first down for Schools, one of the most prodigious athletes in this school's history. Preseason All-American. Coming into this year, led the PAC in rushing yards last year and leads the conference again through the first two weeks this year by a pretty wide chasm. 349 yards entering play today. Here's Schools again, has some running room and gets the first down out toward the 10. And that's what cannot happen if the Spartans want to be successful at containing them. That first guy has to either make the tackle or hold on to him long enough for the, all his buddies to come and help him out. Because if you start letting this guy break tackles, you're going to be running up and down the field all day long. Wesley Schools eclipsed 4,000 career rushing yards in week one against Juniata. Now second in rushing yards in program history behind a former NFLer, R.J. Bowers. Sets up first and 10 from the 10 with Case up 7-0. Schools again, this time he's bottled up, and that was a quick job by Josh Smith to get in there. Great athlete, Josh Smith. Uh, moved down from safety to outside linebacker this year, and they're expecting him to have a big game containing Schools today. Yeah, that's going to be his job when he's in there, and he comes out, Nick Katalisek comes in, but Smith's job, if he's in, is going to be essentially to spot shadow West Schools. Yes, and that's going to be great for him too because that just removes a lot of the other – thinking that goes along with the defense. If he has one job, he can really let his athleticism shine. Second and goal from the eight. Good opening drives for both teams, but Schools is wrapped up again, and a good tag team job there with Andrew Lease in on the tackle along with Isaac Withrow. The roommates working together, stopping Schools. Lease does a great job. He had a really big hole to fill with Ian Henderson leaving, but he's been a capable player all four years he's been here. Quite literally, a big hole to fill with <laughs> Ian Henderson, six foot six, three hundred forty pound nose tackle. 
Third and goal from the nine. East has three wide from the pistol. Looking right, has some space, and they stop him just before the goal line. Withrow helping out on that tackle again, along with Patrick Crossy. The target to Brendan Caffrey is going to be just shy, and it looks like the offense will stay on the field. Yes, that was a great job by Caffrey finding the hole in the zone coverage there. Kind of just saw, he saw everyone moving around, linebackers going out to cover that flat, and just settled right there. And East made a great throw to him. Little crossing route. Everyone in the stadium knows where the ball's going here. Number 23, Wesley Schools. There's that power set again, and Cameron Drake is the only man out wide to the left. The give is to Schools, trying to power to the goal line, and he'll get in. On fourth down and goal from the two. Beautiful execution here. This is a very experienced offensive line. He's running behind, and he just powers it in. Finds the hole, makes a cut, accelerate to the end zone. Fifth touchdown of the year for Wesley Schools. Had one last week against Bethany. Nick Morrow trying to hit this PAT. He's only missed one in his career. And this one will tie it. He's now 44 for 45 as a Wolverine and 11 of 11 this year. Well, it's both running backs, Zach Hall and Wesley Schools on long drives for their offenses to tie us up early on. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Bulls touchdown has tied this thing up. Grove City with uh, a TD from schools, their All-American running back. The Spartans had one from their halfback as well, Nick Hall, uh, Zach Hall, and we are all knotted up. Two beautiful opening drives by off by both offenses. I think this is what, that's going to be very typical of what we see. Both offenses are the shining part of the team. So let's hope for a shootout here. Well, you know, we talked about that before the game, and we were saying that a shootout probably favors Case, given the the history of this offense the last few years. But this uh, Grove City offense is proving to be quite formidable even just running through schools and not much in the air. Well, there's gonna be a penalty on that kickoff as it goes out of bounds and a nice job to watch that Free one kick, roll out. Out of bounds. Ball be placed to 35. First. Tough decision there for Travis Johnston watching that thing walk along the end line. Yes, but uh, it's and especially tough too since he plays middle linebacker. He probably wants to get his hands on the <laughs> ball a little bit more often, but uh, real good cerebral play by Travis which is what we've come to expect out of Travis, whether it be on the defensive side of the ball or returning kicks. He had to do a little bit of everything in high school, too, coming from a, a small high school, Division Seven school. And so now he has to do a little bit of everything as a linebacker and kick returner. Nothing new for him. Yes, yes. Here's Drew Saxton with Zach Hall in the backfield and four wide. Both teams successful into the end zone on their opening drives, and now Saxton has to scramble. Making it happen with the legs and his stiff arm. He'll get out to the 40, and it's a five-yard gain. Good protection by the offensive line. More or less just guys weren't open. See Polizzi coming down, helping his buddy D out. And here we go. Drew can do it with his legs. I know the past couple years I've been used to Rob Kuda running around in there wild, but Drew can run too. He just chooses to do uh, so selectively. More of a pocket passer, but outruns Nick Graybeck sufficiently there to get himself five. Hall in his right hip pocket. Sackton looking to Hall immediately. He's got it out toward the 45 before he's tripped up. Little team tackle, Jackson McFall in, in there along with Parker Kilgore. Nice little pass and catch to move the chains. 
First down out to the 45. This is Hall again. They are really feeding him the football, and Colton Young wraps him up after a short gain. But Case is going to keep doing this, it looks like, handing the ball off to Hall over and over and over again, and you feel like eventually the hammer's coming. Eventually, yes. Yeah. So you just gonna we're gonna wind down this Grove City defense, and one one of these times, whether it be Zach or Donald, might reap the benefits of Zach's hard work. One of them is gonna buzz for a big game. Sixteenth year head coach Greg Debelak, ruminating on his options here as Brett Carney comes in at running back. Pressure coming. Saxon gets rid of it. This is Rabina over the middle into enemy territory for a first down and survives the crack from Patrick Mark. I'm not jealous of Mario right now because that's a tough play to make. Hold on to the ball there. Beautiful. Coming right over the middle. Again, a guy who was a return specialist the last few years getting his chance to be fed the ball on offense, and he's been a pretty good target here for Drew Saxton, who still has not targeted Colt Morgan. Offensive player of the week in week one was Mr. Morgan, 146 yards. Saxton right side, that one looking for Colt, a little bit too tall. Now Jackson McFall is right on him. He is glued to Colt Morgan. Yeah, and Colt still has about a foot on him, though. <laughs> <That's>, which is <laughs> You can put whoever you want on him. If yeah. he's got a foot, he's got a foot. <laughs> That's one of the hallmarks of a coach slash offense and coach Debs. They really like balance. So you're going to see him pound the rock a couple times, then eventually they're going to get back to that passing game. Now Donald Day the third is in at running back. Morgan to the bottom of your screen. Set the program record with 18 receiving touchdowns last year. Saxton dumps it off. Day shimmies, gets the block, cuts back the other way, and tries to power his way to the sticks. It's not gonna quite get there, but a valiant effort both with the agility and the strength to get to third and short. That was a great play by number 67, Anthony Polizzi. Looked like it was a maybe a slow developing draw, but he gets out there, gets his hands on three or four different guys to help Donald get the extra yards he needs. Anthony Polizzi out of Brockport, uh, New York. Second year starting at right guard. All UAA honorable mention last year, I believe. That was right on your left hip last year as the right tackle, Mr. Yes, Steve Yes, he was. I saw him uh, kind of grow up last year, and now he's a – oh, there we go, Donald. Here comes Day. Oh, oh he nearly oh. had the real estate, and he gets tripped up at about the 15. Oh, he's going to hear about that one tomorrow. You can't be getting tied up with your shoelaces there. This offensive a... line is just loving this. they getting the ball, running the ball, feeding them. Because these Grove City guys, they're they're not quick. They're, they're more of a stronger guy. And generally, our, our offensive linemen, we like that. No fun chasing around a quick guy all day. And that was a touchdown-saving tackle, yes. too. Well, Day has shown his lateral quickness the last couple of plays. They'll give it to him again. Day couldn't slip free that time. Gets Another little draw down. there. Still positive yards. Ryan Appleby on the tackle, second and six. Subbing out Glatz, bringing uh, Chase Whitty, number four, and Carney. Look for a pass here. So Carney's going to come in at running back, and that's Whitty in the middle of those three wideouts bunched to the right. Rabina, Witte, and Morgan in order with Wojcikowski on the left. Saxton looking, end zone, picked oh. off by McFall. Now we see here, Drew, just by main didn't see him. Real tough play, you really don't like turning the ball over, especially when you drive down the field in the red zone. And now you let the Grove City offense come back here, come back out here, and they can chew clock like no other. So they're going to need to come back, talk about what happened. Maybe some miscommunication on the route, but even Drew Saxon's human sometimes. That's a frustrating area of the field to give up the football. Jackson McFall with his first interception of the year, first since 2017 against Waynesburg. 
for the senior out of Oil City, Pennsylvania. So now Josh East and company back to work from the 20. This is Cameron Roth as he gives Wesley Schools a break. A well-deserved break after that first drive. That long opening drive. Both teams had very long opening possessions. Yeah, this is not a very typical CWU Grove City first quarter. Tied up at seven only. Under a minute to go in the first quarter, too. By the way, schools six rushes in that uh, opening sequence for only 17 yards. They passed the ball a ton. Here's schools. He's got some room to work. Out to the 39. His ears were burning. Yeah, he wanted to see here, just easy, straight up the middle dive. And you running behind those big, experienced offensive linemen. Pat Car you don't want Pat Crossy making too many tackles on schools because that means he's getting down. And especially running the other way. Yes. There's that power set again. Should be the last play of the quarter, tied at seven. Grove City, after losing 33 games in a row, going into 2017, has now won nine straight, and they are giving Case a real hard time in their home opener at DeSanto Field. Tied at seven. Both running backs have gotten across the goal line. Wesley Schools for Grove City. Zach Hall for the Spartans, and we're through one in Cleveland. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Well, through one quarter, the Spartans and Wolverines are all knotted up at seven. Case on their opening drive, got a rushing touchdown from Zach Hall. Grove City on their opening drive, got a rushing touchdown from Wesley Schools. And then an interception of Drew Saxton in the end zone by Jackson McFall has flipped the field, giving Grove City the football after Case was threatening on its second drive of the ball game. Have a shot of the beautiful Wyan Athletic Center there. I don't know if you ever had the chance to go inside of it. I have on a few occasions, but uh, but not to utilize the facilities so oh. much as you did. <laughs> Spent a lot of time in there, but East is going to hand this one off to West Schools on first and oh, ten we got a from fumble. the thirty-eight. Fumble, loose Travis ball. Johnson. Here comes Johnston for six. See that quick getaway speed there? Let's. Who pops it out? Boy, nearly impossible to yeah, tell. Yeah, nearly. Kind of just went into that scrum, but Travis Johnson showing off why he returns kicks there. Breakaway speed. Breakaway speed. And Josh Smith looked like, I don't know if he was the one who punched it out, but he was certainly part of that scrum coming in from behind yes. to lay the hit on schools that forced it out. Going to get another, another look. look. See, Josh has hit that whole pile. Might have been uh, Brian Victor, number 49, tangled up in there a little bit. He might have ripped that ball out. The way Johnston came away with the football, yeah. it wasn't like he picked it up off the ground. He found that thing in the air. Mm -hmm. Made the most out of it. Albrecht, very low kick, but it Ooh. slips through. Oh, it was tipped. All I wonder if it was... Yeah, all that matters is it goes in and it's just, seven. Just gets through the uprights. It <laughs> looks the same in the box score. Exactly. 14-7 Spartans on the turnover. Let's get a look at the K's band. So back-to-back -back turnovers then in very quick succession. Jas Jackson McFall picking off Drew Saxton in the end zone and Travis Johnston exacts revenge for K's. 
And that is one of Coaches Debs' biggest talking points throughout the entire camp, August fall camp, and throughout the season. He says the only statistic that correlates to wins and losses is your turnover margin. Case came out here, made a mistake through an interception, pick up that fumble, flip that turnover margin real quick. And they're now plus one on the season in turnover margin. They were plus one entering today. And after uh, interception followed by a fumble, a wash today, plus one on the season again. By the way, Travis Johnston blocked a punt week one, leading to a special teams touchdown. It was recovered by Michael Amadio, who ran it in for six. And, uh, and now he's got a... Fumble recovery for a touchdown of his own. This is to Cameron Roth, fielding it about the 10, and cuts it back across the grain, tripped up around the 30 yard line, and a very nice job to get in on that tackle by Colin Schuster. Defense should be pretty fresh. They only spent a couple plays out there, so I know sometimes on these quick turnarounds, especially after tur or turnovers, you can get a little tired, but especially if it was only one or two plays, they should be all nice and fresh. Fresh and fired up. It yes. wasn't like a turnover heading into a drive. It was a turnover that led immediately to a touchdown on the same play. So they've got a little energy. They have Amadio in for uh, Johnson at inside linebacker, the series it looks like. Maybe Travis getting some oxygen on the sideline. Doubtful. He's in pretty good shape. Yes. Well, Josh East going absolutely nowhere. Brian Victor stands him up. It's Reed Gershenson in on the tackle, too, out of uh, Lisi Vejo, California. He's a fourth-year player for the Spartans, another one of those guys that's trying to fill the hole that Ian Henderson left along with Lise. Yeah, Lise is going to be the starter, but Gershenson, who played in three games off the bench last year, will see some time as well. Second and ten. East wants to change up the protection. He saw some pressure coming. A little creeping toward that left tackle. East loads up, and he's got himself a first down out to Cameron Drake. So this is something that we talked about in the week leading up to this game. Cameron Drake and Cody Gustafson, the two junior wideouts, are pretty much the same guy as far as this Grove City offense is concerned. And at one time, you might see Cody having the big day. The next week, it might be Cameron. And right now, it looks like Cameron Drake is getting the, the bulk of the targets. Yes, I know Coach Devs mentioned he does not want to be beat by uh, Cody Gustafson. So you let Drake, you, you're willing to sacrifice those couple plays to Drake here and there in order to shut down the All-American. Not much there for schools. Yeah, it's interesting because Cody clearly has the numbers. Last year set uh, Grove City records in receptions, receiving yards, touchdowns. He holds the career receiving touchdown record in Wolverine history. And Drake doesn't have quite that much cachet on the stat sheet. But he'll get his targets, he'll make his catches, and he'll really do a good job taking the pressure off of Gustafson. Lots of pressure on yes. Josh East there. We have Brian Victor and Cam Brown in the backfield. Yeah, sometimes the stats may not always come. Oh. For intentional grounding, number 41 was in the area. Anthony Lascola just making sure everybody's aware with the booze raining down. That was Brian Victor right yes, in Josh's face. right in face. there. Came in off that outside linebacker blitz, which is not easy to pick up, especially on those play action type plays. Yeah, if you're, if you're a tackle, what are you trying to do there to make sure you get that picked up? Uh, tackle, that's all pre-snap communication. You need to be watching the defense, seeing where your safeties are aligned. And here we go again on the four-man front. Cam Brown's loose. Third and nine. Brown in pursuit. Too far. Fourth down looking for Gustafson. And those are the plays that might not necessarily make it on the stat sheet, but Cam Brown doesn't even – this is almost like he's not even hindered getting back there. He, and that, you know, may go down as quarterback, Corey, might not, depending on who's doing the stats. But those type of plays there is why this Spartan defense is so successful, because of him. Caleb Brake's going to punt it away. And you got a real good look on that last replay of how quick Cameron Brown is. You know firsthand. Yes. 
going all the way back to seventh grade playing uh, Bria versus Westlake and all throughout high school and then every single day throughout <laughs> uh, my four years here at Case. Cam Brown, he's he's as good as advertising. He, he makes you work and makes everybody around him work. Caleb Brake doing what he does his best, which is uh, pinning his opponents pretty far in their own end. That was a good long punt, getting the Spartans down to their 15. Brake had a big punt last week against Bethany. It was a tight game, two-point game, less than five minutes left. He pinned Bethany under their one. Grove City got a safety. And they Wolverines. snapped a six-year losing streak against Bethany. That's right. And got a quick touchdown and sealed it up. Nine straight wins for them dating back to last year. And one of the big plays started on special teams with break in that fourth quarter. Saxton over the middle too far in behind his target, Donald Day the third. Oh, Donald got a little excited there, Pierce. Had him wide open. It looks like he just tripped over his own feet, but it always it happens. It's tough to kind of turn real quick. He probably wasn't expecting the ball as soon as it came. Little happy feet all alone in the middle of the field. Second and 10 now. Case on their own 15, up 14-7. Last touchdown came on defense. Travis Johnston scooping a fumble and scoring. This is a screen. Nice They'll feed screen. today again, but he's going nowhere fast. And Jackson McFall, who's been flying all over the field, gets another stop. Yeah, those screens are tough. It looks like we ran it right into the blitz. Everyone did what they were supposed to, let your blitzers go by, but it was just sniffed out there. This is a big defensive possession for Grove City. They need these stops, and they can win the field possession battle, the field position battle with a one-score game in the middle of the second quarter, that would go a very long way. Yes, and letting Case get up by two scores is never a good idea. Saxton under duress, stepping up, getting hit, but delivering his strike, and a first down to Michael Wojkowski. Beautiful pickup on the blitz there. Um, D goes, gets a little beat around the edge, but does just enough. They've been bringing uh, that outside linebacker, Curtis uh, Freyermuth, every single play. And at that point, it's not more or less of if he's coming. It just creates tough angles for that tackle. And D, obviously new to the right tackle position, is really getting tested here, picking up the uh, tough blitz. Yeah, that's not blitzing to surprise your opponent. That's no. blitzing for another reason entirely. Yeah, usually you're blitzing because maybe that you, you want to run a 40 front. You want to give that 40 look, and you just don't have the personnel to do it. Here he comes again. Klontz picks it up. Still pressure, Saxton gets rid of it. This is Colt Morgan in space. Shimmies his way to a first down past the 40. Beautiful. Three most dangerous words in uh, case football. Colt Morgan in space. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's four. Don't <laughs> used, used to be Rob Kuda with the football. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Tux, that's... <laughs> that was always, you know when that happened, that was, something fun was going to happen. If it started with Rob, you were in trouble if you were on the defensive side of the football. Yes, and that made, made our lives a lot easier up front. Now you can say the same about Drew Saxton and Grove City head coach Andrew DiDonato knows a thing or two about Drew. Coach Drew in high school at South Fayette when Drew was a freshman backup out in Pennsylvania. Yeah, he was pretty good at South Fayette. I don't know his exact numbers, but I'm pretty sure he has a couple state championship rings for them. One of the best quarterbacks in that uh, league's history, WPIAL all-time ranks in touchdowns, second, passing yards, six. He was not the starter when Andrew DiDonato was the OC at South Fayette, though. So uh, DiDonato did not have the opportunity to... Uh, to play with that new toy that was Drew Saxon. They still <laughs> won a ring that year, though. Yeah, I'm sure that made up for it a little bit. I'm sure Drew has one, too, as the backup. Yeah, I think they would give it to him. Unless he was playing uh, freshman ball. They separated their teams, but... He's just a special player. Now at third and one. Case trying to make it a two-score game. Under 10 to play in the first half. This is Day, 
with some patience and a first wow. down. Excellent run by Donald. See him get the ball. Hole's not quite there. Hole's not there. Bounce. Find it. Get the yardage. Donald's a player who's really come a long way since uh, last year. There were a couple times last year he ran the wrong way or <laughs> maybe just didn't do things quite to, you know, to how it was drawn up, but he always played hard. I say, gosh, Donald, the hole was supposed to be over there. Yes. You still got five <laughs> or six yards. He breezes past you on the left. Here's Hall tripped up. Still a pretty good gain on first down. Hall's just getting better and better running this outside zone play. This was a play we put in a couple years ago, or Case put in a couple years ago, and he's really starting to grow and learn how to run it. Derek Klontz, Chase Strayer, great athletes. He's just all about getting everyone to the outside. He just needs to find that seam. And Strayer has moved all over this offensive line the last few years. Yes, came in as a tackle out of a Menor. Did some winning down there. Saxton over the middle. That's a first down. Oh. Witty on a foot race. Touchdown. Beautiful execution of the RPO there by Drew Saxton and Chase Witty. See everyone celebrating, the offense line getting their head nods. Now Witty, very fast kid, used to punt for us. Had some injuries last year, finally came back, really showing up. Let's see the point after here. Here's Robertson Albrecht. Punches it in and there is your two score game. Good drive by Case, ends on that Chase Witty strike. Didn't have a catch last week, gets in on the action, or two weeks ago, gets in on the action this week, and his uh, second career touchdown, first since 2017 for Chase Witty. So he gets across the goal line to give Case a 21-7 lead, 8.20 to go in the first half. With 31 unique creations to choose from, there's something for everyone to love at Dave's Cosmic Subs. Meat lovers, vegetarians, and everyone in between agree that our freshly baked bread, high quality ingredients, and homemade sauces make us the best in Cleveland. Come on into Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry to experience legendary subs in a cosmic atmosphere. And don't forget, we deliver. It's as easy as dialing 216-320-0330. Be the hit of the party. Order Dave's. Case makes it a two-score game with a Chase Witty touchdown. 21-7 Spartans after the 35-yard strike from Drew Saxton. And now the stop made by Travis Johnston yeah, on the return. Got a flag on the play. I assume it's going to be some type of holding block in the back. Anthony Lascola, our head referee, talking it over with back judge Jason Wilkinson, who presumably threw that flag. Now you can kind of hear yeah. Lascola <laughs> say holding. Holding, number 34, receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul at the end of the run, first down. Now that's not a great start for Grove City. This drive for them is gonna be very important because you're down two scores right now to a prolific Case Western offense and you want to make sure you don't uh, create yourself, dig yourself a bigger hole. Now we talked about that being a very big defensive possession for Grove City and Case was able to beat him. Now a long ball to Drake. He just got turned around. That was going to be another big ball to Cameron Drake from Josh East and it just didn't connect. Yeah, that was going to be six, no doubt about it. Beautiful protection up front. You're basically protecting with seven. So these case Western de defensive backs are really going to have to step up. Kevin Chris is in coverage, and Drake was free. East just looked like he threw to the wrong shoulder. Yeah, maybe the wind got it a little bit. <laughs> Second and 10 from the 17. By the way, that last case drive, 85 yards on nine plays.
Got a two by two here. Oh. East is gonna keep it and not get a whole lot to make it third and long. Quarterback draw taking a little uh, page out of the Case Western playbook. And for East too, that's kind of a, a throwback to the guy who preceded him. We saw more of that with Randall Labrie before he got hurt last year and East took over. East more of a pocket passer. You'll see week to week, some weeks he'll really run a lot and some yes. weeks not. Last week was a run week for him. Yeah, that's if you got if that's what the defense is giving you and that's what you have to take, then that's what you do. I know against Juniata, he didn't run too much, just a couple for a couple quarterback sneaks. Oh, the corner blitz on Colin Schuster. Deep ball tipped, oh. knocked down, looking for Drake. <laughs> Crossy in coverage, nearly had it. He'll be kicking himself tonight, yes. but it's fourth down. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I can hear his dad in the stands yelling. Should have caught it, but great coverage. That's the other problem too. When you, if you see there, you got Crossy and Chris is right there. So when you only, when you're staying in blocking with seven, you're gonna have your guys double covered sometimes. Josh East wants Cameron Drake deep as much as he can get him. Yes. <laughs> Let's see what the Spartans do to try to neutralize that a little bit. And if that opens things up more for Wesley schools, you think on the ground? I think that will definitely open things up more for schools because the Spartan DBs and the Spartans off or defense is going to start looking for deep because they know they do not want to get beat deep. Here's Rabina <laughs> diving forward away from the tackle by Patrick Mark. Anything for those extra yards there. Caleb Brake with some pretty big hang time, but the yeah. Spartans will have good field position starting with 7-10 to go in the half, up by two. That was a beautiful kick. You just don't see too many great kicks, but setting up. Let's see, we got Zach Hall coming out. See more uh, same pace as what's been working for Case here. See if they go as up-tempo as we've come to expect from them. They get a quick score here. Then that really puts Grove City in a bind, oh, but the ball is no. loose. Fumbled handoff. The Wolverines think they have it, and Man. they do. That's just a draw play gone wrong here. See, oh, Zach Hall just started running, and Drew didn't uh, stay with them a little bit. That's the one bad thing about those draw plays. If you're if that mesh point, you're not on that same level with that mesh point, you could really start to fumble the ball around. And that's the last thing you want to do. Especially forfeiting the great field position you were just your defense just provided for you. Yeah, now you give that exact same field position to Grove City. RJ Debo, by the way, on the recovery. The junior transfer out of New Brighton, Pennsylvania. Defensive end diving on it. Now schools back to work. Again, not a lot of room for him, even with what we were just talking about, with Grove City trying to throw the deep ball over and over again. That's just impressive because Case, you know, they really don't uh, fall into those kind of traps where, you know, they'll get used to pass. You won't lull Case to sleep because they play such good assignment football. They don't ride the highs of the emotions of the game. They don't ride the lows. It's all about what is my job, and I'm going to do it every play. By the way, that was Zach Trusky. This is Schools, and he's got some room, and he's slippery. He gets near the sticks, but they'll mark him. Looks like they're marking him a half yard short. Oh, or uh, they might give it to him. Oh, they gave it to him. First down. A little tempo out of Grove City here. And that power set again. Here's Schools off tackle left, and a touchdown saving tackle. This is Nick Hedlistic on the tackle. He'll come out, Josh Smith will come in and probably shadow Wesley School so that doesn't happen again. First and 10, Grove City can make this a ball game again. Schools bottled up and tripped up. Smith was there. This Grove City offense is really all in on schools. If you notice their personnel, they almost have the same type of personnel in the field that you would have with a triple option offense. One receiver, three running backs. We got two of your running backs wearing 40s. 
who might be uh, converted middle linebackers or guards. Yeah, that's Jacob Sheila and Tyler Beal, who are listed as fullbacks slash tight ends. They're in that power set. Here's Schools trying to bounce away. No, sir. Third down and long. Sheila and Beal, both about six foot and uh, 250 pounds, so they can really cause some havoc, as they did on that play there. Schools so slippery. That's why it's so important for that first guy who makes contact to either tackle him or hold on for dear life until <laughs> someone else can come and help you. And Travis Johnston got there first, bouncing him off the line of scrimmage. He got back there, and it's third and ten. Big play for the Spartans' defense. Need to stop here. East looking right. To Gustafson, broken up. Chrisis was there. Beautiful coverage by Chrisis. But you're only running a two-man pattern, so it's really easy for the Spartans' defense to lock in on those two guys running routes. Fortunately, those two guys running routes, Gustafson <laughs> and Drake, are extremely good at running them. Yeah, they are your, your two go-to guys for Josh East. Two pretty good options. But it's fourth down, and Nick Morrow... Out for this field goal, stutter oh. steps, and it's well short. Snap was bad on that play. We saw him in the pregame. He was hitting probably about 40, 45 yards. Brian Victor came out like he got a piece of that, where he was running to the sideline like he might have. Didn't look like it was no, interrupted. He, he might just be trying to pick up some more production <laughs> points from uh, Coach Miller. Well, either way, that's, a, as you alluded to, a big spot, a big uh, stop for Case. Now the offense needs to make up for last time and start scoring points, I think, this defense for all they've done for them. Two turnovers today by Case. Very uncharacteristic of Case. Yeah, not used to seeing that. Saxton an interception and then that botched handoff. Now Drew looking deep, right side, oh. too far. Trying to go over the top. I was looking for Wojcikowski. The freshman, the true freshman. Even though we don't see too many red shirts down right here. <laughs> Not at uh, the D3 level no. almost anywhere. And Wojcikowski out of Painesville, Ohio, Riverside High School. Didn't have any touches last week, got himself a reception today. Little pump fake from Saxton. Gets it in between two DBs to Colt Morgan, and that'll move the chains. It's about time he found his favorite target. Beautiful protection. Drew just stays back there. Throws it in the vicinity of Colt, and you know he's going to come down with it. Right in between Dan Melville, the cornerback, who is in man coverage, and Patrick Mark, the safety, coming over top. That's a really well-timed pass. Yeah, it was great coverage, but sometimes... Great players just flat out beat great coverage. It could be frustrating as a defense when you have two guys on one and he still makes the catch. That's what they're trying to do. They want two guys on Colt Morgan. That's why he hasn't seen much of the football. Saxton still finds him, and he finds Zach Hall here, stumbling to a first down before he's tripped up by the 40. He stumbled just like Donald or Donald Day did a couple plays ago, but he was able to keep his balance here. Even got a nice little uh, juke there on Luke Salerno. Left Salerno in the dust a couple yards back. Which is impressive because Salerno used to be a safety. Moving down the middle linebacker, that could be a little tough. And you are, that's tougher to play in the box, but you have that quickness to rely on that most linebackers don't. Yeah, Andrew DiDonato has done quite a bit of that with his defense. As they sling it out to the right here, this is Morgan powering his way to a first down by the 20. But they moved Salerno from safety to outside linebacker to inside linebacker. They moved uh, Parker Kilgore from outside linebacker to inside. They've gotten a lot faster. Yes, they have. And he basically, when you have a 33-game losing streak, anything's on the table. <laughs> so they just start trying stuff and make it work. And he's really turned this program around here. That losing streak now way in the rearview mirror. Yes. So much so that those freshmen and sophomores, it, they don't know anything about it. I mean, they know about it because it's in the record books. 
Yeah, but, but uh, they, they didn't experience it for themselves. They committed to a winning program, and that's really another testament to guys like Schools and Gustafson who committed to Grove City when they necessarily oh, – they necessarily weren't the best program, and they came in there and they busted and worked hard and uh, really turned it around. If you're an underclassman coming in now to Grove City, that losing streak is this nebulous thing in the past. Exactly. You might hear the upperclassmen talking about, I guess, the opposite of the glory days, right? And now, now <laughs> the they're dark ages. firmly in them. Winners of nine in a row, but Case trying to spoil the party. Let's look for a zone play here to set up a nice third down. Lead blocked by Zipco, probably. On second and five, Hall right through the middle gets stacked up. Zipco, great tight end. Really has come a long way with his blocking great hands, but he's really got to make sure to get those hips on the inside there. Keep that guy out and provide for that hole. Oh, you see a shot of Coach Miller coaching up the defense. If you're uh, somewhere in the Cleveland area, you could probably hear that conversation <laughs> going on right now. Couple blocks away. Now let's see, third and three. Looks like Coach Deb's gonna take a time out here. Talking to the side judge. Let's see, five on the play clock, so that seems likely. And they will take that first time out. Neither team has taken one, so with 131 in the first half, Case will take one. Talking about uh, defensive coordinator Warren Miller, you told me that in practice you knew you guys as the offensive unit were doing a bang-up job. If you could, The louder <laughs> the decibel level was from a Warren Miller on the sideline, the better you were doing. Yes, we used to uh, do team, especially during camp and during the week on Tuesdays, we do team right in the middle of the field, and Coach Miller would stand on the opposite uh, goal post. And we knew when we had a great uh, day of practice, we could hear Coach Miller uh, yelling at the defense. There were a couple times even after the team session was going to individual, and he was in the opposite corner of us. We used to practice down here where it says DeSanto Field by Wyant, and he was all the way over in the corner by Starbucks, if you're familiar with campus. And we stopped practice individual a couple times and listened to him yelling. And <laughs> He doesn't yell. It's not. He's just a passionate guy. He's not yelling. He's not tearing guys apart. He's not getting personal with them. He's just coaching. He's just passionate about it. It's one of those guys where it's listen to what he's saying, not how he's saying it. Get him a uh, a year supply of Ricola. Yes. <laughs> Especially with the way this offense has been rolling the last few years under Saxton and before him Kuda. Third and three from the 13. Drew looking over the middle. Low toss Ooh. to Rabina. Did he get him? Yes, he did. And he brought it in. And a first down. Oh, Drew's going to be watching film tomorrow, shaking his head, because that should have been six. But good catch by Rubina. Just a little low, and Rubina did well to make sure he did everything he could to get that pass. The other thing here, though, is that's third and three, this deep in enemy territory on a, a Greg Debelak and Derek Slash offense, they would have gone for it. Oh, definitely. For sure. There's... No question about it. And that's no testament against uh, Robertson, Albrecht down there, the kicker. It's just when you have this prolific offense, you use it. Little draw for Hall on first and goal from the five. But uh, Colton Young there on the stop. Yeah, great play by Colton Young. Eating up a couple blocks, getting in there. And it's a timeout by Grove City. So they want to figure out how in the world they stop this case team who's going to get a couple more cracks at it. It'll be second and goal from the four with 52 and a half to go. Now this is, it's tough because Case Western on film over the past years, they've shown they're willing to throw the ball down here on the four yard line, but they'll also pass it all over the place and they'll either, you know, they'll run middle outside, pass it all over. The entire playbook's open for Case Western Reserve. And also a couple trick plays might be up Coach Deb's sleeve and he waits to break him out down here. So I was just going to ask this, and now it appears we may see it. Mason G. Montgomery oh. is coming out for the Wildcat, and this feels like a great time to do this right out of the timeout when Grove City might have been preparing for, for something, something else. else. Yes. It looks like Grove City, they didn't make any too many personnel changes, but let's see where MGM goes. So it's MGM at Wildcat quarterback. 
First stop oh. made. Spun away at about the one. It'll be third down and goal from the one yard line. MGM a finding a hole, stiffing his nose up in there. And he got stopped by the other number one, Patrick Mark. And the timeout by Grove City. Yeah, I'd call timeout too, especially after I saw someone else coming in <laughs> playing quarterback. <laughs> I'm sure they had to have prepared for that too. Do you think that in the in the timeout, part of the conversation was if they do this, if number one comes out, here's how we play it. Were there two plays drawn up? Uh, there might have been, but there was also probably guys up here spotting for Grove City, just like they are for Case, looking down and seeing what personnel are coming onto the field. But if you could see, the entire offense comes out there, so that kind of blurs that line. It might have been one of those be ready for anything moments. So here's the other goal line personnel that we're used to seeing with Saxton back in at quarterback and Donald Day the third, as opposed to Zach Hall in at running back. Now when they ran that Wildcat, they had Brett Carney in at fullback yes. as well. It was a great blocking back. Really struggled last year to find a guy who was a really good blocking back and when they slide, slid Carney over from outside linebacker, it was almost a natural fit. So third and goal from the one. Spartans up two touchdowns, trying to make it three going into the half. Let's see if Donald can sniff the end zone on this play. They'll give it to him. Does he have it? Oh, he has it. That goal line smelled pretty good. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful execution here. Offense line. Just get on the uh, left side of your guys. Donald finds his gap. Press one uh, foot in the ground and go right up in the end zone. And that's a tough spot to be at Grove City defense, especially backed up against your own goal line. That is the one time I've, I've never envied a defense is being backed up because you have to, if you don't win at the line, you lose. Luke Salerno tried to slide in there underneath and he got his shoulder on Donald, but not enough. And it's a three score game. The Spartans get another one on the ground this time. Donald Day the third in for six. Case 28, Grove City seven. 40 seconds left in the half. Anova Living is a modern, amenity-rich residential community located in Cleveland's Greater University Circle neighborhood, offering studio, one, and two-bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with convenient on-site shopping, 24-hour concierge services, a 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. All within close proximity to Case Western Reserve University. Anova Living online at anovaliving.com. Robertson Albrecht to kick it off. Donald Day the third in for his first touchdown of the year. Had a couple last year. And now Case up by three scores nearing halftime. Short kick Ooh. from Albrecht. Great tackle by Carney there. Brett Carney on Jacob Sheila, the up man. Now Grove City did a, about everything they could to stop Case on that goal line stand attempt. Used up two of their timeouts. Case threw the kitchen sink at him with yes. the Wildcat look as well and three different running backs in that set. And It'll still. be interesting. It looks like they're not just going to take a knee and go to half, which is what I would have thought, especially when you rely so heavily on school. So it looks like they're going to drop back and get after it. Better watch out for Cameron Drake. They've dialed up the deep ball to him a few times, but we'll get a flag on the field and a false start. Oh. Now that really stings. That just sat in. Just backing you up further when you don't need that. Back to the 39 with 34 seconds left. Are they going to reset the clock? That's what it sounds like. I have a little inside view of the uh Yeah, a little inside view yes. and some <laughs> not thin walls, but your your windows cracked open enough that you can hear the chatter one room down. Yes. 
Yeah, they're going to adjust the, the game clock to what? To 34? Uh, I think it was probably 34 or so. Well, you'll see it if it changes. Now get ready for Cameron Brown here. This is a clear passing situation. And before the play was blown dead, he was already past the right tackle, uh, Sherrard. So let's see. Yeah, Luke Sherrard has had his hands full today with Cameron Brown. Yes, he has. But the nice thing when you go to that, when you have those two fullbacks in there, is you have a lot more guys blocking, and therefore you can double-team guys a lot easier. Ten seconds added to that clock, by the way, up to 44. 44. It was 40 when the kickoff happened. Was it? Yes. <laughs> well, now. Oh, hmm. now we're back down to 34.8. Okay. That was uh, was confusing for a second. So things don't change quite so much as they once appeared. <laughs> Here's East with Brown coming off the edge. Yep. Oh. And behind Cameron Drake. They keep trying to find Cameron Drake downfield, and he had Kevin Chris has turned around, but then the throw turned Drake around. It's almost like he's trying to throw to his back shoulder, and like he expects Drake to kind of stop there. Instead of Drake's got he's got strides on our the Case Western DBs. You just gotta throw it out there and let him go run it down. Four wide. Over the middle. Nice little catch and pass. I don't know if you noticed on that play, but they had the right tackle, the right guard, and Wesley Schools blocking Cameron Brown. And now Brendan Caffrey catches that out by midfield to the 48 and a timeout for Grove City with 20.6 seconds left in a third and six situation. So that's their last time out of the half. Do you think we're going to see... Not a bomb on this play, right? Not on third and six with 20 seconds left? Uh, I think we will. Just, or it's two down territory, but they're out of timeouts. If it were me, I would go into that huddle. I would give my guys two plays. I would say, we we're going to throw this play. If it works, then we're going to get up the line. And we get, if it works and we get the first down, right. get up the line, spike it. If it works and we don't get the first down, then we're going to run this play. So there's okay. no communication there. So you're going to try to go some sort of crossing route over the middle. Over the middle. Easy first. Easy first, yes. Personally, I'd probably also have Cody Gustafson running a fade down one of the sides along with those crossing routes. But I'm a little bit more of an aggressive player <laughs> than most. So we got a two-by-two two set here. You offensive lineman, you just want to go for the jugular. Oh, every time. <laughs> Third and six. Pressure. East steps up. He'll use his legs. Caught from behind. <laughs> Fumble on the play, it looks like. Let's see. Case thought so. It looked like East was down, and the clock is going to run. Can they get it down and spike it in time for a play? Two seconds and one. East gets it down, spikes it. Zero showing on the clock. Spartans wanted to go to half, what? <laughs> and they will. 